Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and we're going to be talking about the five myths about the actuarial exams. And the reason I'm making this video is I've heard a lot of rumors and myths about these exams, which just simply aren't true. So I've taken the top five and making a video about it. So yeah, let's see what they are about. Okay, the first ex um, myth, and I hear this one quite often, is that the exams are impossible. Um, the myth is that you have to be a super genius in order to pass these exams and that they are incredibly difficult. And this is false because, well, we have empirical evidence that a lot of people are passing these exams. I don't know if you saw my last video where I got my results back and we saw that on most of the CT exams, more than 50% of the people who attempted the exams did pass. So using statistics, we've just proven that the exams are not impossible and some people, actually more than half, are passing these exams. Another myth is that if you're good at mathematics, you're going to just breeze through these exams. In fact, only if you're good at mathematics should you even attempt these exams. And my lecturer gave me a very nice analogy um, in answering to this myth. He said, mathematics is like fitness to a soccer player. In order to play, a soccer player needs to be fit. But just because a soccer player is very, very fit doesn't necessarily mean he's a very good soccer player. You know, you need to be able to dribble, you need to be able to shoot, you need to be able to tackle. And the same is with actuarial science. You need to be good mathematically in order to do the calculations and, you know, integrate and all those various things. But there's so much more to the profession than just being mathematically mindsetted. So you have to have a whole bunch of other skills like judgment and decision making and knowing when to do models and business and all these other things. So mathematics, though it's an important skill, it's not the only skill that you need. The next myth is that it takes up to 10 years to pass all these exams. And while it's true that there are a lot of exams to be written, it doesn't actually take that long. Um, I know people who have passed all the exams within five years, and how it works is you, you do your university degree, you'll get a few exemptions if you're doing an actuarial science course. Uh, then there are three years that you need uh, work-based experience in order to become a, a fellow actuary. Um, and so four plus three should be, the maximum should be around seven. Yes, if you come into the actuarial profession a little bit later or you do another course and then you, you know, bridge into it, it may take a little bit longer. But the average is not 10 years. 10 years is, yes, there are some people who take even longer to write them, but the average is not 10. It's more, more of a lower number, I'd say around seven. Um, but if you count in at your university and work-based experience and all of that type of stuff as well. So they are a lot, but they don't take you that long. Okay, myth number four is one I've also heard a lot, and that is that there's this rumor going around that says the actuarial profession will only pass a certain percentage um, after each test. So if 100 people write, it doesn't matter how well you do in that exam. All that matters is how well you do relatively to your peers because they're only going to pass 5% or something, something ridiculous. And this isn't true. How the actuarial exam works is, and why the pass rate varies and stuff like that, because oh yeah, the, the evidence they say is because the pass mark changes can be anything from 60% to 40%, it's up to the examiner's discretion. But what that whole thing actually is, is they want the exams to be fair across all the years. So if the exam is very easy, they'll raise the, the pass mark. If the exam was very hard, they'll lower the pass mark. And it doesn't matter if every single person passes that exam or if no one passes it at all. It's how the students did relative to that paper, relative to the actuarial profession as a whole throughout all the years, and not just that exam sitting. So if you do fail, it's not because the examiner was out to get you or because you wrote with a whole bunch of smarter people. It's because you didn't know your work well enough or you were just unlucky. And then the final myth is that if you get 100% in all your actuarial papers, you'll get membership into the Illuminati. Okay, I'm, I'm just fooling with all of you guys. Okay, I made this one up. I just wanted to have five myths because if I said the four top myths, then it wouldn't 
would make such a nice YouTube description. So, yeah, this one is rubbish. Uh, but the interesting thing is, is that you could never disprove this one because you never get your marks back for how you did an actuarial exam. When you write it through the South African profession, they don't say, oh, you got 40%, you got 50%. What they do is if you pass, you just get the symbol P, P for pass. If you just failed, you get an FA. If you failed, like normally, you get an FB. If you did a bad failure, you get an FC. And if you did really badly, you get an FD. And that's like, don't don't try again. Um, and, and that's what's, it's, it's a little bit frustrating because, you know, you want to know, oh, did I do very well or did I just do a little bit well? But in the actual profession, all they care about is whether you pass. They don't actually care about how well you did. And so I guess we'll never actually know if this final myth is true or not. Um, but yeah, jokes aside, the four uh, myths have been that these exams are not impossible. You need more than mathematics to pass them. They don't take forever and they don't pass a certain percentage. Thanks so much guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers.